scripture today comes from the book of John, chapter 3, verse 1 through 21. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one could perform the miraculous signs you were doing if God were not with him. In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth. No one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. How can a man be born when he is old? Nicodemus asked. Surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. No one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sounds, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it's going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus. And do you not understand these things? I tell you the truth. We speak of what we know, and we testify to what we have seen. But still, you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things, and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but for, but for whoever does not believe stands condemned already because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but men love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light, so that it may be seen plainly that what he has done has been done for God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you for sharing with us this morning, Rachel, as we hear the word of the Lord spoken through the gospel of the book of John. Before we begin, let us pray. Lord, we come before you during this time of teaching. We ask your blessing upon these words that they might stir and touch the hearts of men and women who hear them. In the name of the Lord, pray these things. Amen. So the title of my sermon this morning is A Tug on the Heart. Have you ever had a feeling an intuition about something. I know most of the men here are thinking to themselves, well, duh, what are you talking about? On the other hand, the majority of the women here today are thinking, all the time I have a feeling that sometimes foretells the future. Let me summarize what I just said. A wise man once told me, if you're going to do something, if you're going to make an investment, anything, ask your wife first. <laughs> now you want to tell me that women have something that us men do not have, and it's called women's intuition. Now before you ladies get too puffed up, on rare occasions, we men get a feeling, an intuition too, a tug on the heart. And so it was for Nicodemus, who came to Jesus in the dark of the night to question Jesus, to query Jesus about salvation. Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God, where no one can perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. Just so you know, Nicodemus is a Pharisee. He sat on the Sanhedrin of Jerusalem, the Supreme Court of Israel. He was said to be the third wealthiest man in Jerusalem. 
And because of his stature in the community, Nicodemus probably had a lot of eyes watching him. And that would explain the visit with Jesus during, as the Bible tells us, the dark of night. He's obviously heard of Jesus. Maybe he even saw Jesus do some miracles. We know from our reading that he attributes signs and probably wonders to Jesus. So he is cautiously inquisitive as he addresses our Lord. Note that Nicodemus doesn't acknowledge Jesus as the Son of God. His curiosity had not yet led him to that conclusion. He only addresses Jesus as rabbi, which means teacher. Right here, we see a flaw in Nicodemus' thought pattern as he thinks about Jesus. He thought Jesus was a teacher who came from God. What he didn't realize was that Jesus was God who came to teach. Like Nicodemus, a whole lot of people come to Jesus out of curiosity, or they may have a, a burning question in their heart. What burning question do you come to Jesus with? Before Nicodemus could even ask a question, Jesus knew what was on his heart, what question he was about to ask. The psalmist tells us, before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. So Jesus answers before the man asks. Hear the Lord's reply to the unasked question. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You got to know that Nicodemus was a top dog Pharisee. Yet at this new teaching, he scratches his head and he says, what's this born again thing? What I love about Nicodemus is not only that he is searching, he is asking. Jesus says, this about asking in Luke 11, verse 13, is one of my more favorite verses. If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? Golden treasure is there for the asking. You want to be part of the kingdom, experience heavenly sunshine? Don't be bashful. Ask God for the Holy Spirit to enter in. Because Nicodemus was obviously searching for God, I've been thinking about what God is really searching for. Sure, he wants everyone to be saved, but what was even his motive for creating man to begin with? God created us after his own image. And so to understand God just a little bit better, let's look at ourselves. We're created after His own image. What motivates us? What drives us? One of the things that we all have in common is to belong. We want to belong to a group. We want to have friends. We want to belong to a club. We want to belong to a church. Mankind was created to be social. But it's more than social. Belonging to family is one of the greatest and deepest yearnings within each one of us. God even created the first family, Adam and Eve. In Matthew 19, Jesus talks about creating family. Hear the word of Jesus. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife. Yes, family is important to us because it is a natural instinct that God planted within us. Family is important to God also. Like each of us search for a cher and cherish family, so it is with God. He searches for all of us. And we ask why? So we might be together with Him as family. 
Hear this from John chapter 1, verse 12. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, born of God. If, if God is our Father, and we his children, as Romans 8.17 says, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. God so much wants us to be family that orphaned as we are, He wants to take us in to be with Him in the glory of heaven. The musical Annie contains a wonderful illustration of becoming an heir of God. When Annie moves from the orphanage to the Warbucks mansion, it is an incredible change for her. She leaves behind a pitiful alcoholic caretaker and enters into a relationship with a loving and caring father. She goes from having nothing to having a fortune at her disposal. A hard knock life is overcome by the brightness of a sunny tomorrow. Seen from a Christian perspective, Annie is a picture of what being a co-heir with Christ means. God so wants you in His family. Like Annie, there's a mansion waiting for you. Waiting if you're willing to be born again. A learned scholar like Nicodemus didn't understand as he asked Jesus, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter into his mother's womb a second time and be born again? If Nicodemus didn't understand Jesus, be born again, it's likely that some of us here don't understand either. Nicodemus came to Jesus because he had a feeling, a feeling, an intuition, a tug on his heart that he was missing something about this man named Jesus. Right here at the start of their conversation, Jesus fills in the part that Nicodemus is missing. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. This is so exciting, people. It's so awesome as we approach the throne of grace for understanding. Without this, you are dead in your tracks, literally. But being born again, well, welcome to your new life in Jesus. Paul describes your new identity, the new you in Galatians 2 verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Understand and cling to that. You are born again, born brand new in Jesus Christ. Can't be done, says Nicodemus. How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter into his mother's womb a second time? Of course, no one can physically be born again, but our Lord is talking about spiritual birth and coming to Jesus. Nicodemus was a religious man to be sure, yet no amount of religion, no amount of good works, no amount of prayer is going to get him or anyone else, for that matter, into heaven. It all goes back to Ephesians 2, verses 8 and 9. For by grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Here's the thing about born again. Like being born, you have nothing to do with it. Let me explain by using some Bible verses. First of all, we just read in Ephesians 2. Where does faith come from? It is a gift of God. Even your faith is not of yourself. God has given it to you. In James 1 we read, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father. Being born again, salvation comes from the Father. And Jesus says in John 6, No one could come to me unless the Father who sent me 
draws them, and I will raise them up on the last day. So you see, being born again is not at all about what you say or do. It's all about what you let God do through you. You are not in control. That's why Jesus says to Nicodemus in John 3 verse 8, The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. You want to be born again? Let go and let God. After Jesus tells Nicodemus and us that we must be born again, Jesus continues in verse 5 of John chapter 3 with this. Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the Spirit. Oh, what's this about? Born of water and the Spirit. No wonder it takes me so long to read my Bible. Every sentence requires me to dig a little deeper to understand what it really means. First, the water. Some think it's about the birthing process. If that's what Jesus meant, well, that's kind of redundant. Is it about baptism? If that were so, wouldn't Jesus come right out and use the word baptize? Even Nicodemus is stumped and asks of Jesus in the following verse, How can these things be? To which Jesus replies to him, You are Israel's teacher and you don't understand these things? Nicodemus must have missed the lesson in Ezekiel 36 verse 25. Then I will sprinkle clean water upon you and ye shall be clean. From all of your filthiness and from your idols, I will cleanse you. And then in Ephesians 5, talks of Jesus' love for his church. Even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it, with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. The water about which Jesus speaks to Nicodemus and to us today is the water that washes you clean and leaves you pure and holy and spotless. Jesus speaks of, except a man be born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. We've covered the water. What about the Spirit? Jesus says in John 6, The Spirit gives life. The words I have spoken to you, they are full of Spirit and life. Did you catch that? The words that Jesus speaks, that is the Holy Bible, are full of Spirit and life. The Spirit is what comes alive in you. So that's enough analysis. Let's move on to some practical application. Jesus says that each of us, in order to enter into the kingdom of God, must be born again. So the question is, have you? Have you been born again? Nicodemus came to Jesus because of something called sinner's worry. Something was tugging on his heart that there must be more. So he went to the source. He went to Jesus. And so must each of us. Your personal born again experience is something between only you and God. It requires faith and commitment and repentance and sacrifice and a willingness to leave behind who you were and become new in Christ. Are you willing to put all of your trust, your whole life, in the hands of Jesus? Hands that were pierced for you. Can you leave behind friends who are willing to lead you astray and down the path of destruction and instead follow He who leads you to life, life eternal? 
Are you willing to give up immoral living, bad habits, and commit to living a sin-free life? A holy life? Not according to your standards, not according to your thinking, but according to what Jesus teaches in the Bible. Teaching that you must be born again is a foundational truth of salvation. Jesus says that born again is everything. It is what you need to be adopted into the sonship of God. How are you born again? There's only one way. Let go and let God. Lay yourself down at the feet of Jesus and ask for deliverance. Humble yourself before the Father and sincerely ask that you be born of the water, be born of the Spirit. Now if you think you're saved, but you're not quite certain, then go back to Jesus. If you've lost the love you first had, go back to Jesus. If you feel a tug on your heart, Go to Jesus. Here's the promise of the Lord. Draw close to God, and He will draw close to you. If you want to be born again, go to Jesus. If you want to be born again, let go and let God. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord.